uh, we were relieved that uh, the results are as they are. Um, so we are looking forward to a, you know, some are talking about a new start, a reset in the transatlantic relations. One thing I think uh, one can say for sure, we will have a much better communication, uh, whereas Donald Trump was treating his allies, you know, all sometimes even like foes, as he labeled us ourselves, uh, himself. So um, I think a lot of enthusiasm about the uh, restart in the transatlantic dialogue, nicer tone, but the issues, the topics remain on the table, most of them at least. Peter, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the European Commission president, was speaking just uh, recently about the prospects of a U.S.-EU trade agreement, and she cautioned that we know that we cannot turn back the clock, not on trade, not on TTIP, and we need a fresh approach. You mentioned that a lot of the same topics are going to be on the agenda moving forward, but how can the approach um, change in such a way that will actually lead to a breakthrough on, on U.S.-EU trade? Yeah, trade is a, is a key issue uh, uh, across the Atlantic. Um, um, you know, we, we don't have, we, we shouldn't waste time to dream of transatlantic nostalgia. The TTIP times, I mean, it uh, didn't come uh, true, uh, didn't become reality, uh, but we need something more than just a um, industrial um, duty agreement. You know, some are saying the proposal from the European side around the table uh, with regard to doing away with tariffs that are there, still an aluminum and stuff like that. But I think that is not enough. I think even though we should look on the, uh, to the other side of the big pond with a realistic eye, but at the same time, I think it's, it's good to also be ambitious. So with the phrases and the formats and templates of the past, I think uh, we will not succeed. And also a reality is uh, Joe Biden has said he will first uh, do a stock taking with regard to the competitiveness of the United States of America. So it will take some time until he will turn really to a negotiating table with the Europeans. In that time, we need to rephrase our proposals from Europe, from the European side, and really uh, make new proposals that are both at the same time realistic and ambitious. Um, what do you think, how damaging will the contentious issues like Nord Stream and also the defense spending of Germany will be um, for like the restart of those relations? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, Nord Stream 2, I mean, we are talking about a second string in an already existing pipeline. Um, uh, you know, it's amazing how uh, this project has climbed to the top three priorities in the transatlantic agenda, but it's reality. It's um, of great interest uh, to the American friends, especially in the Senate and the House of Representatives side, not so much driven by the White House or the administration, more by U.S. Congress. That is a topic that will remain on you know, the transatlantic agenda. You know, I'm sitting in my uh, uh, MP office in the Bundestag currently as we speak, and today we will have a debate about Nord Stream 2. So also it's of interest for us, but a clear message to the American friends, uh, Europeans are taking good care of their own your energy security issues, and I think we should continue this dialogue. And it's too bad that we didn't have a chance in these pandemic times really to have this personal exchange. I think letters like this, that of the three senators uh, some months ago to the port of Sassnitz in Germany would never have uh, been sent to the, to, to, to the addressees uh, if, we could, if we had a chance to really lead that dialogue more personally. But um, again, I mean, that will remain on the, on the table. It's too bad. There are much more, uh, uh, you know, uh, important issues that we should discuss about uh, things of a positive transatlantic agenda. But uh, reality, uh, Nord Stream 2 also belongs to the reality that we have to face.